In today's video, we're going to take a look at the same complex lookup problem that we've been looking at in the past two videos. But I'm going to show you a super simple formula solution for this. Now, if you watch the past two videos and you're thinking, okay, I already have enough ways of handling this. I don't need to know yet another way of solving this. Don't skip this video because you might learn something new. I certainly did. If you missed those videos, I'm just going to quickly explain to you the problem. We have the list of dates here. We have the division. We have the date that each of these apps went live. Now the data set that we get is like this. What we have to solve for is that we have a report where we have the list of apps and we need to find which division they belong to. So basically we have the data in the matrix and we need to find the header of this matrix. Now my first video was to solve this with index and some product, assuming that we have a unique data set. So each app could just belong to one division. The second video showed you a method of solving this if an app could belong to more than one division. So we get more than one answer back. And that used index and the aggregate function. Now, in addition to my video, Kevin and Oz also posted their versions of solving this. And I really recommend that you watch their solutions as well. So I've put the link to them, obviously, in this workbook that you can download and also in the descriptions of this video. And then Bill Sizzes commented on this video with his solution. It's so simple and so smart, and it just uses the text join function. So you do need to have Office 365 subscription to be able to use the text join function. But if you have it, it's a super simple way of solving this. Now, what amazed me was that I had never seen text join being used in this way. I never thought of text join as solving a complex lookup problem. I thought of text join as a way of helping me add the, the values in the cells to make it into one column because it makes the generation of the CSV files much simpler. Let me show you how we can use text join to get this result. So I got Bill's permission to make a video on this. I thought it could be useful to see text join in a different light. Think of it as a way of concatenating cells. What you can do in addition to just concatenation is that you can define the delimiter that you want to have in the end. Okay, so let's say we want to have a semicolon in the end. Okay, so that's the end result. We have the option to say ignore empty cells or include empty cells. I'm going to include empty cells. Then it's text one, text two, text three. So let's say I do this, this, and then this. Okay, I get it looking like that. Let me just bring it down to here. Okay, so that's a good way of creating uh, CSV files and uploading because some systems require the CSV files to have a special delimiter. So this makes that process easier. Now, how can this help us with a lookup function? It's this characteristic of the text join function that's gonna open doors. So check this out. It works, right? It accepts ranges. And that's the key that's gonna help us solve this lookup problem. How can we do that? Well, if we think of the simplest function that basically can check, is this cell equal to this? And if yes, give me back this header. What is that function? If function, right? I could say if this one, we'll just do one cell at a time first. So are you equal to this? If you are, then give back the header. Otherwise, give back nothing. Okay, simplest if function. Now it gives back nothing because there's nothing there. If I put it to blend, it gives back productivity, right? Now, if I turn this into an array, so instead of just checking one cell, I can also say, let's check all of this. Are you equal to blend? And if yes, give back this. 
Okay, I can do that if I press Control Shift Enter. Basically, with the Control Shift Enter, Excel keeps this in memory. Okay, because if cannot handle arrays. Now, if I highlight this and press F9, you can see that it has it there. It's there. It's just can't put all this result in one cell, right? So it's just going to put the first empty occurrence in there. So we don't see the other results, but they are there. Now the trick is, all we have to do is to put this function inside the text join function. Why? Because text join is going to take a look at these it's going to ignore empty cells if we wanted to, because that was an option. And it's just going to return this and this. So I'm just going to write it up here from scratch. So let's do text join. Now this is the delimiter that we want in the end. So I'm just going to put a comma here. Now, in this case, we do want to ignore empty cells. And the last one, that's our if formula. So we're going to say if, now I can put the whole thing in there. Let's fix it. Are you equal to blend, right? And if you are equal, then give back the correct header. So I'm going to fix this as well. Otherwise, give back nothing. So that's going to generate those empty ones. So close, close, control, shift, enter, productivity and games. Right, let's just push this down. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so that looks great. We have the same results like we had before. We have it all in one cell, in one place. Now, what Bill did is that he took this one step further and he accounted for cases like this. So he accounted for cases that if blend occurs two times, how could we avoid this to have productivity two times? That we just get each occurrence once. So he made the formula bulletproof. And how did he do it? He used the find function. Okay, so let's take a look at find and see how this could work here. Find needs a text. Okay, which text are we looking for? But let's say we're looking for this. Where are we looking for this? And let's say we take this. And the last option is optional. Okay, we don't need it. We'll just start from the beginning. So basically, it returns a number. It returns the position where productivity occurs. And it returns the first match. And that position is one. Right? So let me just show you. If I drag this up here, games, let's see what we get. 27. These are sitting in the same cell. So the 27 means that this is the 27th character in this cell. Okay, and if I push this to utility, what do I get? I get an error. Utility is not there. It doesn't find it. It generates an error. This is a good starting point to have. And based on this result, we can create a unique result using the find function. But how can we make this work? Again, let's try to make this into an array formula. So instead of finding just productivity, we're going to find all of this in here. Now again, find, you need to press Control Shift Enter if you give it more than one cell, just like the if function, because it can't by default handle arrays. Okay, so ignore what you see in the cell, because that can be misleading with these type of functions, it's always best that you highlight, you press F9, and you see what's really behind it. We see the 1 and the 27, so that's the productivity and the gains, and for utility, we get an error. Can these numbers help us in some way? Well, the way they can help us is the fact that they are a number. It's not what they return, so the results that they give us is irrelevant. The thing that matters is that they return a number, right? Because what we could check is, check, is the first position a number? And if it is, return the
this? Is the second position a number? And if it is, return this. Is this a number? If it is, return this. Otherwise, return nothing. Okay, so that's the way we can use it to get back these headers. If I do if is number, so that's all we care about in, from the result of the find function is all we care about is that is it a number or not? So I have to close the bracket here. So if this is a number, then return these. Okay, so let me just do the fixing as well while I'm writing this. Otherwise, return nothing. Okay, so I need to close. I think that's fine. And Control Shift Enter. Let's highlight and press F9. Productivity Games Empty. How can I get productivity and games back and not get the empty one back? All I have to do is to put this again in a text join function and say the result that I want, let's say we wanted to have the comma as a delimiter. We wanted to ignore empty cells. Now you can put true or you can just skip the argument. The default is true. And that's the array that it should work with. I'm going to close bracket and control shift enter. And there you go. So we have a unique occurrence. So now instead of this referencing this, all we have to do is just copy our original formula and paste it in here. Instead of this I5 reference, I'm going to paste this formula. Control Shift Enter and we are done. So if blend occurs two times here, we just see the unique headers here. So this is how you can use text join to solve for this complex lookup problem. But many thanks to Bill Sizzes for sharing this method with us. I hope you liked this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates when new videos come out.